the State of the Union is not just a speech, not just an annual right of our democracy. Behind the scenes, it is also a massive, complicated, and often chaotic spectacle populated by quirky characters and embroidered with fascinating little traditions. So tonight here, the version of this event most people never get to see. The President of the United States. This is the part of the State of the Union we all see. But there is also a whole strange, colorful world behind the scenes. Check out this time-lapse video posted by Speaker John Boehner. You're looking at Statuary Hall, right outside the chamber of the House of Representatives where the president gives his speech. It is here that, starting early in the morning, the media set up shop. It is also where, at 2.30 this afternoon, we found Representative Elliot Engel from New York taking a break from his 12-hour campout for a prime seat. There are a number of people who, who come early, who, uh, who sit in the seats, and we kind of uh, look after each other and uh, protect each other, and uh, it's, 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 it actually becomes a, a lot of fun. Engel is what's known as an aisle hog. For 26 years, he's made sure that he's had a seat along the middle aisle so he can be seen with the president. There he is with Bush 1, Clinton, and Bush 2. Sometimes it's just a pleasantry like welcome to the house. I never think about what I'm saying till I'm actually there. At 3 o'clock today, the House historian posted this picture of the House chamber 150 years ago. Little known fact, for most of this country's history, the State of the Union address was actually just a written document known as the annual message. The first televised State of the Union was 1947, Harry Truman. Each group of our population has its own responsibility. President Obama has been working on his speech for weeks, even while on vacation. This is a picture of him with his speechwriter, 34-year-old Cody Keenan, who Obama calls Hemingway because he often sports a beard. At 3.55 today, a tweet from the comedy site The Onion. Headline, Biden arrives early to set up State of the Union fog machine. Minutes later at 4 o'clock, Senator Marco Rubio meets the press. You may remember Rubio took some ribbing back in 2013 when he delivered the Republican response to the State of the Union, and he stopped for a drink of water. Then false choices like the one the president laid out tonight. Today, he was asked what advice he would give to Senator Joni Ernst, the freshman from Iowa, seen here preparing for tonight's Republican response. Senator, do you have any tips for Joni Ernst tonight? Yeah, I drink lots of water. At 4.35 on the North Lawn of the White House, ABC's John Carl spoke to Obama's senior advisor, Valerie Jarrett. He does have a bounce in his step, and I think it's reflected in the fact that our economy is strong. The state of our union is good. That bounce in his step, likely the result of recent ABC News poll numbers showing the president's approval rating has jumped nine points since November when his party got clobbered in the midterm elections and the Republicans took control of both the House and, for the first time in years, the Senate. At 7.50, the White House tweeted a picture of Obama's suit for the big speech with the hashtag YesWeTan. At 8, the White House announced that Transportation Secretary Anthony Fox had been chosen as tonight's designated survivor the cabinet secretary who will spend the evening at an undisclosed location, ready to take control in case anything dire should happen during the speech. Back in 2006, Jim Nicholson, who was the Secretary of Veterans Affairs, was the designated survivor. The White House mess fixed me a fabulous meal. Then I told my wife it was the, uh, the best meal I had outside of our house. And then we all sat down and watched the State of the Union. <laughs> At 8.50, the president left the White House, and it became very clear that the whole tan suit thing was a joke. 9 o'clock, game on. You are looking live at the Capitol. ABC News goes live. Shortly thereafter, the president arrived and walked down the aisle. Engel, a Democrat, was an increasingly rare, friendly face in a room that, for the first time since Obama became president, was dominated by Republicans. But his speech made no mention of that fact. The shadow of crisis has passed, and the state of the union is strong. A defiant, triumphant president declaring victory over the Great Recession, a vindication, he said, for his policy. At every step, we were told our goals were misguided or too ambitious, that we would crush jobs and explode deficits. 
Instead, we've seen the fastest economic growth in over a decade. This is good news, people. Instead of calling for compromise, a president who clearly feels unfettered as he goes into his final two years proposed a controversial plan that he knows cannot pass. Raise taxes for the rich to help the middle class with affordable child care, free community college, and a higher minimum wage. And everyone in this Congress who still refuses to raise the minimum wage, I say this. If you truly believe you could work full time and support a family on less than $15,000 a year, try it. That got applause from the Democrats in the room with the Republicans sitting stone faced, something that happened repeatedly tonight. But perhaps the feistiest and most memorable moment of the night was an unscripted comment towards the end when the president was reflecting on his current position. I have no more campaigns to run. My only agenda, <laughs> I know because I won both of them. Um, when it was all said and done, the president got a total of 33 applause interruptions, six laughter interruptions, and 36 standing ovations. At 1026, Joni Ernst, sporting camouflage heels, delivered her Republican response. And with a little cooperation from the president, we can get Washington working again. As I watched tonight from my office, I wondered, with viewership steadily declining for the State of the Union, and with, according to one study, only 40% of the ideas proposed in the speech ever becoming law, why do we do this anymore? I asked ABC News political analyst Matt Dowd. Should we go back to the days when the president just sends a letter or should we update it to an email? It still gets a huge audience and it still gets an, a huge audience of influential people that are supposed to make and divine public policy in Washington, D.C. and the people that influence those people, as well as all of us in the media. It may sometimes be disappointing or dry, but the State of the Union is still an important American tradition. And, of course, if we canceled it, Congressman Engel would be super bummed. Don't mess with the aisle hogs. Much more post-game analysis of the big speech coming up on GMA first thing in the morning.